Hello and welcome, so I got some great news for you. You only need to hold those stocks here to get a dividend each month. But I even got some better news for you. I will show you how you could build a table like that in Python for stocks of your choice. It doesn't matter if you're interested in dividend investing, finance or data related stuff in general. It will be worth it for you to check this out, I promise you. So let's get started. As you see I already imported some necessary libraries, we need Y Finance to get the X dividend dates for a particular stock, we need Pandas for data handling and we need Daytime to do some date manipulations. So in the very first step I'm going to show you how you can get the X dividend dates for a particular stock. Therefore we have to create a ticker object. And we are storing that in a variable which we are just calling var as an example here. So I'm using the YF library, so Jahoo Finance here and use ticker and here I have to provide the ticker symbol. So let's just take Apple as an example. So this is the ticker symbol for Apple. And if I'm executing that, I have created a ticker object. So if I'm printing out this variable, I'm just getting the information that this is a Y Finance ticker object. And with this object, I can do certain things. So for example, I can pull the price history of Apple by just using the history method. And I can just provide a period here of one year. And with that, now you see that we are getting the price history of Apple for the last year here, right? And I can also use the dividend method here. And I'm getting the dividends for the last year, right? What's important to understand now is that if I'm using the history method and provide, let's say, five years here, then first of all, I'm getting the price history for the last five years, that should be clear. But if I'm calling the dividends method now again, I'm getting the dividends for the la uh, last five years, right? So this is important to understand. So if you are providing a period of one year in the history function, you are getting the dividends for one year. If you are providing a five year a period, you are getting the dividends for five years, okay? So yeah, that's basically it for getting the X dividend dates. In the next step, we wanna do that for multiple stocks. So I'm just taking all stocks from the Dow Jones Industrial Average as an example, but you can also take the S&P 500 or I tested that for the German equity index as well as also working. But just as an example, I'm taking the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So I want to get the ticker symbols from the Dow Jones Industrial Average constituents. So I'm just reading in this table here, which is containing the ticker symbols. So I can just use, so let's get rid of that. I can just use uh, the read HTML function from pandas. And we are just reading in this table here. So I'm copy pasting this link here as a string and I'm indexing for the second table. So I can store that in a variable which I'm just calling tickers. And this one is now containing the table which you just saw. And we only wanna have the symbols here. So the symbol column. So I'm just storing that in a list. So I'm using tickers.symbol to list and now I'm getting a list containing all ticker symbols for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, right? Okay, now we wanna get all X dividend dates for the last year for all those ticker symbols. So we are storing that in a list, which I'm just calling, let's just call that this for dividends. And we are creating an empty list here. And now we wanna populate this list by just looping through our tickers list. And then we are just using the explain procedure, which I showed you for Apple, right? So I can just loop for i in tickers. So this loop is just looping through all uh, ticker symbols here. And inside this loop, I'm just creating, yeah, I'm, I'm just calling that ins for instance, but you can call that whatever you like. So this just, you can call that var as before. And now I'm just doing the same thing as before. So I'm just using that ticker and provide all ticker symbols. So in the very first iteration, I'm getting the first ticker symbol here. And 
with that I'm creating a ticker object here, right? So this is the same as I showed you in the very beginning for Apple, but this I is every ticker symbol in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now I'm using this variable and use the history method and provide the period of one year here, as we want to get the dividend dates for the last year. And now I'm just appending the dividends to this list here. So I can just use this dot append and now I'm just using ins dot dividends here, right? So let's execute that. And now we are getting a list containing all dividend dates for the last year for every single stock in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So let's take a look at that. So you see the very first entry will be the very first ticker symbol. So this should be, let's quickly check it here. This should be 3M. These are the dividend dates for this ticker symbol and so on. So we have 30 entries here, right? Okay, so now we want to create a data frame out of this list here, right? So we can do that by just calling the data frame function from pandas and provide our dividend list as the argument. And let's just store that in the data frame, which we are calling df. And if we are taking a look at that, this looks pretty messy as you see here. So the columns are the X dividend dates and the rows are the particular stocks. So these are the ticker symbols. And this looks pretty messy here as you see. So we have to replace this dividends here by the actual ticker symbol. So as you see, this has 30 rows for all 30 uh, ticker symbols, but this name here is yeah, kind of misleading, right? Because this is just dividends, but this should be the ticker symbols. So we can do that easily by just providing the index as the tickers, okay? So let's execute that again, take a look at this data frame. So now you see we are getting the right ticker symbols for the dividends, right? But nevertheless, this looks messy here, right? Because we want to only get the month and not the exact day. So maybe you're interested in the exact day, then this is good for you. But um, as I showed in the beginning, I want to get the month. Therefore, I have to take a look at the columns of this data frame. And as you see, we are getting the, the exact day here, right? as the the columns. So I want to reassign the columns to the columns and then I can just use the month and I can do that only because this column is a daytime index. So this is just extracting the month out of each date here. So let's just execute that. I'm going to show you what is happening. So if we are taking a look at the columns now, you see that we are getting the month here, right? So if we are taking a look at the whole data frame again, you see that we have the columns now as the month. So three is for March, for example, or four is for April. But the problem now is that we have multiple times the same month here, right? And this is not, not good. I only want to have one month. So I have the March here in the ending of the data frame and I have the March multiple times, I have every month multiple times here. So how can we get rid of that? We could group this data frame by the columns and then we are just getting the columns grouped and we have to apply a certain aggregation function for that. And we could easily take the sum here. Why the sum? Because if a stock is paying a dividend in a particular month, it won't or it is highly probable that it won't pay a dividend in this month again. So I can just take the sum and then get the dividend in each month. So let's do that. And no worries, we are taking an example. So we are reassigning the data frame and use the group by function. And as said, we are taking the columns now. And we are also providing the axis as one. 
So axis as one is that we are applying the aggregation function to the columns. If we are providing a zero here, we would apply the aggregation function to the rows. And as said, we are taking the sum as the aggregation function. So how is this working? Let's take an example. So let's take Caterpillar here. So Caterpillar is paying a dividend in month four or in April. And what this function is doing here is just taking the sum over every column which is containing a four here for Caterpillar, right? So in this example, so this of course applied to every row in the end, but for Caterpillar it is, it is working in the following way. It is doing this, NAN plus NAN, and NAN by the way is treated as zero. So zero plus zero plus zero plus 1.03 plus zero. And in the end, I'm getting a value for four here as 1.03. So I hope I could make this clear. In case I didn't, please just drop me a comment. So let's execute that and take a look at that. So now you see, and let's actually take a look at Caterpillar. Now you see that Caterpillar has a dividend in April of 1.030, right? And the same is true for every other stock. So this worked perfectly, right? So in the end, the only thing what we have to do, and this is kind of cosmetic, we have to replace the yeah number values of month here by the actual month name. So I mean, you don't have to do that, but let's just do that. I mean, this is actually quite interesting, I think, to do. So what I'm doing for that is I'm just providing a fake date here and then replace this fake date by the month name here, right? So how can I do that? I'm just reassigning the columns to, and then I'm using the list comprehension here, use the daytime module, which I've imported in the very first step, then create a date object here and I'm just creating a fake date here. So I'm taking just a fake year I'm taking the I, which is the iteration or the iterator. And I'm just again taking a fake day here. And now I'm using the strf time here, which is just extracting something out of the date. And what exactly is being extracted out of the date? We are specifying in parentheses here. And to get the short date name, you are just using be here so this is this is specified you can look that up right so we are just extracting the um, month name out of this date right and the i is just every single column here right so we can just use for i in df.coms right so let's execute that and take a look at the data frame again and now you see the data frame which I showed you in the very beginning. And I think that's a pretty cool thing. So you can do that for the S&P 500, you can do that for many, many other things. Maybe you are doing that for your own portfolio, could be interesting as well. So you're just providing your ticker symbols. You can do whatever you like and I think that's pretty nice. So what can you do with that? For example, you could check out, okay, which stocks are paying dividends in January. Then you can just check out uh, January is larger than zero. And then we're getting our January uh, dividends and many, many more, right? So yeah, um, I hope this is helpful for you. Uh, I hope you find this interesting or you can extract value out of that. If you do, please be so kind, subscribe to this channel and like this video and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.